Hello there, everyone. I shall start now. Thank you so much to TEDx at Taylor's for inviting me to speak about my favorite topic, which is Mala, and how it can really function as the dramaturgical side of analysis for us to understand what goes on behind closed doors or in unclean sight, very much similar to the theme of today. Now, to the audience, have you ever encountered a comic book or a manga, a Japanese version of comic books, in a bookstore, and you just walk past it because you felt that this is frivolous reading material, it's not going to teach you anything, you're not going to learn anything from it whatsoever? Well, I'm here to change your mind about this. I will ask that manga, in fact, as graphic novels, for understanding what goes on in the front stage as well as the backstage, which is what the sociologist Irving Goffman calls dramaturgical analysis. So I will tell you about how manga can also be used as a platform for us to bridge the distance between those who are under lockdown, especially during the pandemic. And you might be suffering to some extent with the challenges of online learning. And you might feel that you cannot go out there and you cannot experience things as you used to. Now, this is all true indeed for lecturers as well as students. I, of course, aim to make it easier for my students as well as the rest of you by telling you how we could use manga as a dramaturgical platform. Now, what is dramaturgy? It's a concept that was coined by Irving Goffman in the sociological context, which was also dealing of what goes on uh, in the stage among actors preparing for a scene and then acting it out. So basically, we are all like actors on the stage playing our parts in daily life. We have our so-called scripts that we obtain through socialization, whether through family, through peers, through education, or through mass media. We learn what society expects of us, and we learn how to project this into what we call the first stage. For example, we have Instagram profiles where we edit and tweet uh, to our heart's content to impress others. So it's also called impression management, where we try to polish the way others see us. But do we always look that perfect behind the scenes? Now, what manga does is, because of its very stylistic nature, which is rather different from other forms of comics or even graphic novels, it has this style where it tends to zoom in into the emotions of the characters and show what goes on in their minds, their ruminations, their thoughts about the past and their motivations in a way that, that emphasizes this so much more than other forms of comics which are meant to be humorous, or even comics that situate themselves as superhero novels, which aim to talk about how one person saves the entire world. Now, manga doesn't go all that way. Manga tends to explore the ruminations or inhibitions or even feelings of a particular individual who may well very, be, very much be like ourselves, an individual struggling with online learning, with one's internet connection, with other kinds of stresses in daily life, trying to stay afloat on top of all of it. Now, the most famous example that we could think of in Malaysia, of course, is none other than Fujio F. Fujiko's creation, Dora Emon, which we have probably seen in its comic book form, in the manga, even in the animated anime form, or even in various types of merchandise, which we can get all around the globe and on the internet. So you also have many other popular titles, as you can see in the slide, like Sailor Moon, Naruto, Doraemon, Dragon Ball, Pokemon. One might think that these are just cutesy characters with big eyes and uh, like a robotic cat which offers all kinds of technological solutions to his owner. But let's backtrack a little bit and look into what Fujio F. Fujiko was trying to say with the creation of Doraemon. This was all mangas created uh, in Japan's post-World War II era, and he very much paid homage to also uh, Tezuka, Osamu Tezuka, one of the greatest figures in the creation of manga, with Astro Boy and others, where a lot of these manga were in fact trying to make some social commentary about post-World War II Japan, rely on the technology to lift themselves out of the failure that they, they felt or experienced before that. And Nobita, this character, this robotic cat, Doraemon, is portrayed as weak-willed character who has ambitions and has wants and needs but always turns to his robotic partner, give him a quick solution. 
by taking some gadget out of his pocket. Now, what he's trying to say here is that one shouldn't be too over reliant on technology, which is something all of us do, especially in online learning. Now, as a lecturer myself, I do not believe that when you have a multitude of apps that can actually substitute for one's own charisma uh, and talents, apps are important. So there's a balance to be achieved there. And I think that Doraemon, in fact, is a platform to block such a view. And can we bring this also to more sociological themes? Because one might say that Doraemon tends to appeal to younger uh, age groups. Now, we could also a manga which talks about discrimination, social class, inequality, and stratification. Now, there was an ongoing manga which has also been adapted into an anime because it's so popular. Uh, it's in Japan, it's from Japan, and it's called Moriarty the Patriot. For those of you who like Sherlock Holmes, this is a retelling of the whole story of Sherlock Holmes' nemesis, Professor Moriarty, the criminal mastermind and also a criminal mathematics professor. And they tell it from the perspective of Moriarty being a social justice warrior who attempts to do away with social class stratification. So this is somewhat uh, perhaps unorthodox or revolutionary each group and above. So it may fall under the same because it does talk about social class exploitation, issues like child abuse, issues like the rich oppressing the poor, and how people can apply Karl Marx's uh, political ideas to understanding uh, class class relations and whatnot. And so this manga in fact raised some sociological critique. One could use, for myself, for example, I could use this as teaching material in my class, which I do teach to my PhD students. As you can see from this slide, it's a screenshot. That it's a way for people to understand this issue without having to actually go out there and experience exploitation on your own. One, anyone in my class to uh, exploitation, of course, especially when they cannot go out and they cannot have collect data in the very traditional sense right now. So I think it's a good starting point, not to replace textbooks, but to function as kind of supplementary material where one can embrace and apply this course. And of course, there are other ones like Sailor Moon where about one might say gender issues because it's very much about how you might get a very stereotypical feminine main character who is portrayed uh, also a warrior of uh, love and peace. But there are a lot of issues relating to gender and sanity which I through the emotions and the various storylines and arcs faced by the characters inside of the Sailor Moon universe. And it all starts out as comic books or Japanese manga, but then later it's adapted into the anime version. Sometimes the anime version is like a sanitized version of the perhaps darker themes that you may find in the comic book version itself. So I urge everyone here to take manga seriously and um, I do think that it holds a lot of benefits for us to be able to use it as an intermediary for social unity because we can then try to understand each other's experience, whether through the backstage or through the front stage. And take the stage, all the world's a stage, and all the actors have their own parts to play. And for me, I believe that it's now time for manga and make its appearance. Thank you very much for listening to me.